So uh, here we are. We're at the Bernie Sanders rally in Macomb, Michigan. We're pretty excited. We had to go a little undercover today, though. We're repping uh, my ace in the hole, my ace in the hole. She shook his hand. It was. That's powerful. Can I touch it? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I have Bernie Sanders germs now. Uh, his, uh, you know, his socialist germs. No breadcrumbs on that hand. John Doyle in. Heck off, Tommy. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We are tonight's entertainment. Welcome to Heck Off Commie. My name is John Doyle, and as you can see there, we went to the Bernie Sanders rally the other day expecting to get footage for the channel, but um, then there was nobody there. I mean, obviously there were people there, but there was no real enthusiasm. I mean, even the energy that he attracted in 2016 was impressive, objectively speaking. But the other day, the only people at the rally besides a literal like bus of young people that showed up were just a bunch of boomers, just a bunch of old boomers that are all uppity for the 50th anniversary anniversary of Woodstock this summer along with their old pal Bernie giving it another shot bless his heart but really though no one actually wanted to talk to us and we're exposing the corruption within the Bernie campaign this is not a real image this is a false image this has been photoshopped and she admitted it and she's not fired what is this you crazy <laughs> fucking boomer support <laughs> boomer calls me crazy buddy believes socialized medicine's a good idea called me crazy like we go to these things and we try to have fun with it right but they just weren't having it. I mean, I was even undercover, but even that wasn't enough to get them to talk to us. They actually viewed us as the enemy regardless because I was repping my, my ace in the hole, Andrew Yang. Yang, huh? Yeah, you want to talk to us? No? All right. But he was on Yang Gang but didn't want to talk about why he was on Yang Gang. Bit of a bummer. Fake fan. <laughs> he said it. He was so condescending too. He was like, Yang, huh? It's like, yo. When I can afford some real nice machinery, when I get my thousand dollars a month, I'm pulling up. Uh, I'm pulling up. But anyways, cameraman Badan and I were just kind of like, yeah, uh, this guy just doesn't really have a chance. So now let us go over five reasons why Bernie Sanders will not win in 2020, starting with number one. Bernie Sanders is an old white man. He's 77 years old right now. He's already surpassed the average life expectancy for men in this country. And younger candidates, even according to strategists within the Democrat Party, are preferable. They've made it clear that the Democratic Party is getting younger, getting farther left, less male, and less white. That basically screws old Bernie, especially because, as we'll go over, he isn't even that far left anymore, comparatively speaking. Also, uh, black people don't really care about Bernie Sanders. Exit polls from the 2016 South Carolina primaries had him at about 14% of the black vote. And when he initially formed his leadership team in 2016, they were all white. And he was focusing on campaigning in very white states like Iowa and New Hampshire because they vote earlier. But this still caused his relationships with black staff members to fray. And <laughs> according to interviews with over two dozen current and former advisors and staff members, Bernie and his top advisors were not at all committed to communicating effectively with black leaders and black voters. The African-American outreach team from his 2016 campaign had sent a seven-page memo to Bernie and his inner circle with a plan to get black support involving social media influencers and having him give speeches about discrimination in black cities, but the memo was never responded to by Bernie or his inner circle. And Black Americans make up about 22% of the Democrat Party's membership, uh, and Bernie sure has his gripes with the rich, but he doesn't really talk enough about group identity in the way that Clinton did, and his policies were not racially driven to the extent that they needed um, when being compared to a candidate that was employing full-scale neo-Marxist identity politics. And that's the thing. Bernie's an old-school socialist, right? He's still using the old class warfare strategy, putting the haves against the have-nots, whereas his opponents have upgraded to complete identity politics, every group versus every group, and it seems to be much more effective. Effective. And I do think he's learned since 2016 and he knows how to improve from here. I saw him call Trump like four or five different phobics in a speech recently, but it's probably too late for him because of reason number two, which is Bernie is no longer the token progressive. In 2016, everyone kind of knew that it was Hillary Clinton's turn up at bat. They didn't really want to commit suicide out of nowhere, so they just kind of let her have it, right? Vince Foster was found dead in Fort Macy Park near Washington, D.C. He had been shot through the neck with his grandfather's pistol. Official investigations ruled that his death was a suicide. Foster was a close friend and colleague of First Lady Hillary Clinton. They were up against a few nobodies, sure, but realistically, the only two candidates that had a chance were Bernie and Hillary. 
And a lot of people viewed Hillary as the establishment candidate. They wanted someone that was ready to uh, to talk about radical progressive policies. But now in 2020, Bernie's no longer the token progressive. Pocahontas, Sherrod Brown, these people would be described as the progressives, I guess, along with Bernie. But now the party in itself has totally shifted and Bernie can't seem to keep up. Pocahontas, Kamala Harris, Tulsi Gabbard, and Julian Castro support slavery reparations. Does Bernie? Only partially. But Bernie supports free college. Yes, so do Joe Biden, Cory Booker, Julian Castro, uh, Kirsten Gillibrand, Kamala Harris, Tim Ryan, and Pocahontas. Bernie wants to abolish the Electoral College. Right, so do Cory Booker, Julian Castro, Kirsten Gillibrand, Kamala Harris, Beto, and Pocahontas. Bernie Sanders supports Green New Deal. So is literally everybody I just mentioned, except Biden, who has yet to go on the record for it, I think. Uh, but I could be wrong. Same thing with healthcare. Oh, Bernie supports single payer. So does everyone else, except Beto, I think. But you get the point. What used to be radical new ideas in 2016 is now just the Democrat Party. And regardless of the analysis of Bernie's chances in 2020, understand that this is what's on the agenda if a Democrat wins in 2020. Whatever your feelings are on Trump, this is the alternative. National voting, and that means get rid of the Electoral College and everybody can. But also back to Bernie's support. Number three, Bernie's support was inflated. I think a lot of it in 2016 was seen as support for an alternative to Hillary Clinton instead of just raw support for Bernie Sanders. According to the Cooperative Congressional Election Study, 24%, about a quarter, of all of Bernie's support was from hashtag never Hillary people. People that had voted for Bernie, got mad when he lost, and then didn't vote for Hillary in the primary. Half of them voted for Trump, actually, and then the other half voted for Gary Johnson, Jill Stein, etc., or they just didn't vote. Overall, Sanders won about 43% of the popular vote in 2016 primaries. And if 24% of the 43% was never Hillary, then his real was about 33% of the vote, which isn't bad, but also keep in mind what we talked about earlier. The whole party is basically in line with his utopian views now, so he's competing for his base more so than he would have in 2016, along with all the other reasons we've gone over and we will go over, such as reason number four, Bernie is something of a fraud, and the people see through it. Every time he tweets something about millionaires and billionaires now, I mean, people are replying by asking, hey, what house are you tweeting that from, big guy? And uh, it's just not conservatives, by the way. I mean, I'm talking people that have their, their Twitter name set as Biden 2020 or something like that. The amount of wealth that he has and the amount of time he spends complaining about people that have wealth are causing the public to be a bit skeptical of old Bernie. And that might drive his likely supporters uh, to support literally any other Democrat candidate, maybe one with a smaller net worth because they didn't write a really good book. Uh, I wrote two books in recent years. One of them was a bestseller on the New York Times bestseller list, translated to five or six languages. It did very well. I made money on that book. Since they literally all have the same policies now, which is everything just shifted. So I think that Bernie's gonna get left behind. I really do, and hey, that's not what we wanna see, right? We like Bernie, he's a nice guy, he's a bit of a moron, but he seems to be a nice guy. So anyways, last one, number five. Bernie Sanders is on some absolute tomfoolery. Absolute tomfoolery coming from the Sanders campaign. All the ideas that the Democrats are bringing to the table this election cycle are terrible. But Bernie's already got the nickname Crazy Bernie. I don't believe that Bernie can beat Trump in a debate. He doesn't have the crowd skills that Trump does. Uh, the only reason that Bernie gets crowds excited is because he says, hey, billionaires, bad free stuff good he just doesn't have the energy that trump does and trump would crush him even his own constituents would crush him uh, bernie's constituents because hillary never really went after bernie too hard in 2016 until things actually started to establish themselves but now there are a few candidates that might just want to tap into that record of his and say hey bernie uh your record says you voted in support of bill clinton's three strike legislation should we tell that to black americans or uh hey bernie rem remember hey bernie remember when you voted to intervene in libya remember afghanistan oh i remember hey hey bernie remember when you voted against more gun control about half the time i mean the fact is is that bernie can't sell the policies as well as he used to be able to he's too old he's too white he's too male he's too average now policy wise nothing really stands out he's just like the rest of the democrats bernie sanders is just on some absolute tomfoolery he has no chance Hey guys, if you like this video, you know what to do. Give it a thumbs up, leave it a comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. And I don't know why everyone's flipping out. They're like, oh, is he actually on the, you know, is he a real Andrew Yang supporter? It's like, no, no I'm not. What have I ever done that would compel you to think that? You know, it's just like, these are just rumors. Don't believe them. It's just, it's character assassination, classic character assassination. You know, believe what you see, not what you hear on the internet. Uh, I'm not on the Yang gang. So thank you so much for watching and may God bless America.